Hi, this is lesson 2.1, product rule, quotient rule, trig rules. What's going to happen for us is that now we're going to get into different situations where we have to use new rules to find derivatives. One is the product rule, one is the quotient rule, and then you also learn all your trig rules for derivatives now. And a lot of this stuff, yeah, you should be able to derive some of it, but a lot of it, what we do is you just memorize it. So for the product rule, we have two functions that are multiplied by each other, and those two functions would be functions of x. You can do this with a constant multiple as well, but it's just functions of x. And all it is is that if I have the f function and the g function, I'm going to call the f function the first, the g function the second. So all it is is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Here's a little shortcut way to do it too. Quotient rule, that means that I have one function divided by another function. What I call this is the low. This is the high. Low and high, so what we say then is that the low d high. d means derivative. So you're going to take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, low d high, less high d low. Draw the line, and then the denominator squared will go, or low squared will go. And there is a song, low d high, less high d low, draw the line, denominator squared will go, or something like that, which you can find on YouTube. <laughs> So that, those are just two rules that we'll try to use. My students usually are better at the quotient rule because they sing the song and then they forget about the product rule, but we'll see how this goes. So there are two ways to do this one here. We can go ahead and expand. So if I just do FOIL, I can take the derivative then. So this is expanded, and then you can just take the derivative on our polynomial power rules. So there's a result based upon expansion. The other way is to go ahead and use the product rule by calling this f of x, and then this is g of x. This is a definite product of two functions of x. Now this notation might confuse you because we also have an f of x here. But this would be one function and this would be the other. So all I'm going to say is that we're going to take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And when we do that, we'll apply the product rule. Some of you may want to write it out in this form. So this is the first times the derivative of the second. I put the little prime here to say that, oh, we're going to take the derivative of that piece. Many of you will get past this stage very quickly, but some of you may need this later on. And then this one would be the second times the derivative of the first. And so now if I simplify this for f prime of x, or I guess I haven't taken the derivative yet, this would be 3x squared minus 2, and then the derivative of 2x plus 3 would just be a 2. And then I'm going to go plus 2x plus 3, and now the derivative of this one right here would simply be 6x. Simplifying this, 6x squared minus 4 plus 12x squared plus 18x. And finally, we get the same exact answers when we expand it. Now you might say, well, this is a lot more work. Well, that might be true, but what will happen is that we'll introduce some trig functions. And so when you have a product with a polynomial and a trig function, we have to do it by the product rule that we have here. The next one is number two, the quotient rule. How do I know it's a quotient rule? Well, it's a quotient. You have a numerator, you have a denominator. So we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And so we go y prime is equal to the low, which would be the 2 minus 3x, times the derivative of the high. So low d high. And so this would be 4x minus 4. That's the derivative of the high. You can go ahead and use this prime notation if you wish, but um, I don't know. That's where we're at. 
then remember that with the quotient rule, we have a minus. With the product rule, we have a plus. Those should go hand in hand, so just remember those things. And now we have the high times the D low. I'm kind of out of room here. I'm going to take the high times D low. So the derivative of the low would be negative 3. So once again, this is low D high less high D low. Draw the line and take the de denominator and square it. That's where the denominator squared will go. Now, in working with this one, you can simplify. Try not to expand the denominator. Just leave it like it is, but you simplify the numerator, and then you can see if anything cancels. I'm going to leave that numerator simplification up to you. You can do that. Thanks. Now, number three is one of my favorite because students like to go ahead and do this the long way. Yeah, you can use a quotient rule, but if you notice, the numerator is not a function of x. And in fact, I can rewrite this as negative 9 fifths times 1 over x squared. This is a constant multiple, and that just goes along for the ride. So you decide how you want to do that. So I'm going to do it um, with using this as a constant multiple. So if I go y prime... So I'm not even going to use the quotient rule, but you could. Uh, the negative 9 fifths goes along for the ride. This right here can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. So that's what I'm going to be working off of. So I take the negative 2 out in front, raise the exponent to one less power, and I get negative 3. And so if I simplify this now, this is going to be 18 fifths. And then the x to the third goes in the denominator. If you do do the quotient rule, low d high. This is low, this is d high. With the d high, you get a 0, because the derivative of negative 9 is 0. And so we get this right here, and then that would simplify down to 18 over 5x cubed. Because one of the 5s cancel, and then one of the x's cancel. I prefer you do it the first way here. Do it the first way. That's the way you should, but the quotient rule still does work. Here's a more conceptual problem, and do you know which rule to use? And they're going to give you something that's f of x. And so can you do this in general with the f of x function? So if I look at this, this is a product of two functions. So I do need to use the product rule. And what we get, we're given is we're given the value of f at a point, and we're given f prime. And so we want to find g prime, having g defined as x squared times f of x. So if I do go ahead with g prime of x, I need to do the product rule. So it's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That would be my product rule. So if I want to find g prime of 2, wherever I see x, I'm going to plug in 2. So this would be a 4 times f prime of 2 plus f of 2 times 2 times 2, which would be 4. And then they've given me this information up here. f prime of 2 is equal to negative 4. So I got 4 times negative 4 plus f of 2 is 3, so that's going to be 3 times 4. Simplifying this, negative 16 plus 12 should give me negative 4. On to the next part. Next part is kind of conceptual too. Can you go ahead and just figure out what the derivative is at different parts of the sine of x? And so I have this graph of sine of x here. And what we want to do is estimate what the slope is at various points. Now we can get into the minutia, but we're going to find out some very specific points what the slope is. Let's start off at zero. Why do I want to start off at zero? Well, I do have a reason. This slope right here, uh, if you, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this value right here would be approximately one. And so this point is about one, one. I might be off a little bit, but 
that would be this line right here, and so this would be negative 1, negative 1 there, approximately. So our slope is going to be about 1. So whenever we're rising up here on the sine graph, we're going to have a slope of 1. If I look down here at negative 1, our slope is going to be 0. So starting over here on the left at negative 2 pi, our slope of our tangent, so if we zoomed in and zoomed in, the slope right here would also be 1. And if I look here at negative 3 pi over 2, my slope would be 0. So what's this slope going to be? Uh, yes, it's down to the right, negative 1. And then if I go over here, this slope would be 0, this slope would be negative 1, and then this slope would be 0. I think I have them all there. Oh, last one. Slope would be 1 at this last point. Now, it is an end point, so we can't say exactly what it's going to be, but we do know that the sine graph continues, so that slope would be 1. What we want to know now is what is f prime? If I give you that f of x is equal to the sine, is there a way to represent f prime as in terms of a function? Well, if I go ahead and plot some of these points, at negative 2 pi, I got a 1, and then at negative 3 pi over 2, I get a 0. So I'm just plotting the points of the slopes that we have from this graph up here. And so then our next point, negative pi over 2, is negative 1. Uh-oh, what is this looking like? And then I got 0, 1. What is this derivative graph looking like? If you said cosine, you are correct. So the function here for f prime would be cosine of x. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. Now is the derivative of the cosine x the sine of x? Well, we'll find that out. Maybe, maybe not. So you can summarize on your paper here that the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. So what would be the derivative, and we just wrote this here, sorry, derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. Number two says the derivative of the cosine of x, what is that going to be? Well, if we do the similar type thing, I've, I've put the cosine function up here, and if we just plot the slopes, well, what's the slope here? Well, it's zero. What's the slope here? Well, it's negative one. What's the slope here? It's going to be zero because I have a horizontal tangent. Slope here would be 1, and then the slope here would be back to 0. If I look at this graph right here, I'm going to end up with that. What is that graph? Is that the sign? Uh, I hope you understand that. No, it is not. It is the opposite of the sign. So the derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine. Number 3, derivative of the tangent. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared of x. How do we get that? Well, number 6 brings that out. You can look at 4, 5, and 6. Those are ones you just have to go ahead and memorize. We're not going to show you the techniques here for that. But if we do number 6, that will tell me what the derivative of the tangent is. So you might say, well, it's just the secant squared. You already told me. Well, I want to prove it. So how I prove it is that I rewrite the tangent of x as the sine over the cosine. And what rule do we have to do in order to find the derivative of that? Well, it's going to be low, d high. What's the derivative of the, of the sine now? That would be cosine. Less, high, d low. What's the derivative of the cosine? That would be negative sine of x. Draw your line, denominator squared will go. Now, if you see this numerator, it's cosine times cosine. And then here I have a negative, so the negative negative make that, makes that all positive. What do you see in the numerator? I see cosine squared plus sine squared x all over cosine squared x. This is equal to 1 in that numerator. And what is 1 over the cosine squared? Yes, that would be the secant squared of x. In a very similar manner, you can go ahead and prove the derivative of the cotangent by writing cosine over sine 
and you should be able to get the negative cosecant from that. Now looking here at number seven, if I take the derivative, I hope you can see that this is a product of two functions. That would be the first one, that would be the second one. So I need to use the product rule. Yay, so we go f prime is equal to, and I hope you're trying to get ahead of me on this a little bit, you can try this, but it'd be first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the cosine is negative sine of x plus the second, which would be the cosine of x, times the derivative of the first, which would just be a two. And so what do we end up with here? Well, if we clean this up a little bit, negative two x sine of x plus two cosine x. I really can't do too much with that. I don't know any trig rules offhand that would simplify that. And so that would be what the derivative of number seven is. Negative two x sine of x plus two cosine x using the product rule, done deal. Example number eight. Find an equation of a tangent line to the graph of this when theta is equal to pi. So we're not taking a derivative in terms of x, it's gonna be in theta, no problem. You should be able to transfer over to that. And then I wanna evaluate it when, it when theta is pi. So remember, tangent line. I'm going to need slope and I'm gonna need a point. That's all you need for an equation of a line. Some people get confused sometimes, but that's all you need. How do I find the slope? Well, now the slope comes from the derivative though. So we need to find y prime. The point, do I have it? If I have pi, I need to go find what my other value is. So it's gonna be the sine of pi divided by pi. Sine of pi, I hope you understand, is zero. So that's gonna be my point. So let's do the slope. Y prime is equal to low, d high. Derivative of sine would be cosine of x, less, remember the quotient rule is a minus, and then it would be high, d low. Derivative of theta is one. Draw the line, denominator squared will go. And then we have a little bit of simplifying, not much really. Oops, this should be a theta. Cosine theta minus sine of theta all over theta squared. That's what we have. Now, I need y prime, but I need it at this specific value. This one I really can't plug in as a slope, so don't do that when you're writing an equation of a line because it won't give you an equation of a line. However, if I do plug in pi into y prime, I get pi cosine pi minus sine of pi all over pi squared. Yeah, we can simplify this. Sine of pi would be zero. Cosine of pi would be negative one. So I'm gonna get negative one over pi squared. I mean negative pi over pi squared, and so this turns out to be negative one over pi. That would be my slope. Slope of the tangent. So now I can write my equation just in point slope form. Y minus zero is equal to the slope. Negative one over pi. I'm gonna use theta now. Theta is my variable x, so to speak. So then we have theta minus pi, and so I get y equals negative one over pi. Theta minus pi. That would be the equation of my tangent line. And that's what I wanted, okay? So that's how you write the equation of a tangent line using a function that has a quotient rule to it. You can do the same thing if you have a product rule, et cetera. Plug in the value. And remember that the slope, we get that from the derivative, but plugging in the value for the derivative. Thanks. Have a great day.